Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks, depending on whatever time frame you guys are based in. I am based in London, so good afternoon from myself. My name is Naeem Aslam. I come with the wealth of a 15 years of trading experience. During this time period, I have worked as a hedge fund trader for Bank of New York Mellon, as an equity trader with Bank of America and currently providing services as a chief market analyst for Evertrade. Now, if you can hear me quite well, and of course, if you can see my screen, please feel free to give me a check by saying yes or no, because that will help me to see that you guys can hear me and also you guys can see my screen as well. Great, I have already few people saying yes, that they can hear me quite well and all is well. That's great. So let's begin our conversation. So in today's masterclass, as always, we'll be discussing a separate different topic. And in today's topic, we'll be talking about how to trade stocks. This is quite an intriguing one because we are right in the middle of earning season, especially this week. It is all about about tech earnings so we will be focusing quite a lot on the tech earnings in this particular webinar uh, and we'll be discussing several different pivot points in relation to that as always before we do anything else it is important for me to go through this this, this disclaimer anything which will be discussed cannot be perceived as an advice if you are seeking for one please do consider consulting with your own financial advisors now folks in relation to our contact details they are right in front of you twitter handle is ever trade and on a daily basis we do put you uh two videos on our youtube channel Firstly, it is your daily fundamental and technical analysis is the second one. Now, what is the agenda for today? Before we go and develop further into the agenda, uh, give me, a, I wanted to test something from you guys. So please say yes if you have been trading under one year or under a year. So if you are new to this world of trading and you've been just trading for less than a year, so please say yes, because that will help me to understand uh, the level of complexity that I can really adopt in this particular webinar. Okay, I see uh, quite a lot of people who have been trading under a year. That is good to know. Now, if you have been trading over two years, please say yes then um, and that will also once again help me to gauge the level of complexity uh, over here as well and the final question I wanted to ask you guys is if you have attended any of my previous webinars please also say yes or if you haven't attended any of the previous webinars do say no uh, because then that will just give me a bit of a familiarity with you guys that how many people have actually already attended previous webinars. So I see this, there are a few people who have already attended my previous webinars. So welcome back again, folks. And I'm so, keen, so glad to see you guys back because that shows that you guys are committed to learn more and that there are so many newbies over here as well. Okay, so the agenda for today is first of all, we'll be measuring the stock indices all together, and then from there, we'll be formulating a view about the sectors, the, 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 the sectors in the market, and from there onwards, we'll be talking about some special COVID related stocks which are still under that influence. Uh, uh, and that means, like, we'll be in the streaming industry, we'll be looking at Netflix and Disney Plus. Uh, and in the airline, we'll be looking at Boeing, uh, Ryanair possibly as well, United and American Airlines. And then from there, we'll be looking into pharma industry, Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer. With respect to online retailers, we'll be looking at Amazon, eBay and Alibaba. 
in the energy space, we'll be looking at Chevron, Axon Mobil, Shell, and Total. And with banks, we'll be focusing with Bank of America, Citi, Barclays, and Goldman Sachs. So as you can see, we do have quite a lot to cover in our webinar. So without any further delay, we will begin our analysis. And as always, what I'm going to do is we're going to begin our analysis by looking at the indices. If you have any questions uh, throughout this particular webinar, uh, please feel free to ask them, feel free to post them over here, and then I will be looking at them on an occasional basis, and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. But really, feel free to ask me the, uh, any questions as we go along. So the first thing that you can see in front of you guys, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the US 30 chart. And the time frame that we're looking at is your daily time frame. As you can see that more recently, the price has been very much trading in a sideway pattern, meaning the price hasn't been able to form any clear trend, meaning uh, the price needs a bit more attention really, because all what we are looking at is the price trading some sort of a symmetrical triangle pattern over here, and now the trading range is very much narrowing up. But if we look at the overall trend of this market, there is no doubt that the market has been trading in an upward trend, because as you can clearly see that the market is in a very, very strong upward trend. Um, and and in, in addition to that, we also have three different moving averages, uh, which is your 50 day simple moving average in pink, then your 100 day simple moving average, and finally your 200 day simple moving average. Now we are going to move some of the lines over here so that over here, this is your all time resistance over here the price has started to move away from that and then this is your sort of a support level or immediate support level and as always we're going to keep the color green for our support lines and then this is the area that we are potentially looking for this price to come in and then we could see some uh, some sort of a bounce but of course the important area of support or the meaningful area of support is really going to be right around here. Once again, we're going to change the color for these ones to uh, to green, so that we can clearly uh, identify the chart for when we look at them. So when we look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, what we see over here is that the price is very much hovering near its all-time high, but at the same time we are kind of moving away from this all-time high as well. Sorry, got rid of that uh, resistance. I should have that resistance here. Again, we're going to change quickly the color for this one to, to red once again. So we are moving away, but we are still trading quite far from its 50-day simple moving average. And this shows that the price is likely to have some sort of a res uh, retracement. If we compare the price action with respect to the RSI, the RSI is in a downward trend starting from here. Again, if we look at the price from here, this is a high. Then we have a lower high and a lower high. There is no negative divergence, meaning the price is trading in line with the RSI. Now we're going to do the same sort of analysis with respect to the S&P 500 index. Again, what we see over here with respect to the S&P 500 index is, first of all, we're going to define some levels very quickly. So this is our all time resistance being over here. Our support zones again in relation to this one is going to be just where the 50 day simple moving average is trading in. So we're going to we're going to be focusing in around this area and now, when we focus on the price action, we see that the price is more pushing. It is trying to push the price to the upside. So if we are looking for, for the, by looking at it, what we can say is that the overall sentiment in the market is very, very positive. The market wants to more uh, move to the upside rather than to the downside, because the S&P 500 index represents the overall market strength. So the overall strength in the market is quite strong. However, if there is a retracement, 
then we'd be very much looking at in around these particular price levels. Again, this is a minor support level, so we will change this one to a green. So we'd be looking for a inner for the price to retrace to the 4100 sort of a price level. Overall, S&P 500 index, there is no doubt that it is due, it is definitely due some sort of a retracement very soon. Why? The reason for that is because the price is trading well away from the 50-day simple moving average. So uh, another important aspect of this one is that while the price is pushing to the upside, the momentum indicator, the RSI, is not confirming that. The RSI is forming lower lows while the price is kind of forming higher highs. So this means that this price action, although it looks very strong, but the momentum is not behind it, and we could potentially see this market moving to the downside. The overall market, we could see a potential retracement. Now, we will quickly look at the NASDAQ index, and then I'll review all the three indices, and I will make, uh, then that everything will start making a lot more sense very quickly. So once again, what we're going to do is we're going to have our support zones defined over here once again, and we're going to change those support zones into green lines so that we can have things identical in relation to everything, because support zones needs to be green, and resistance needs to be in red so so that we can identify them now on the daily time frame what we're seeing again the same thing that the price is trading quite away from its 50 day simple moving average just like the s p 500 index we have a negative divergence over here as well meaning the price was forming uh, you know we're still making sort of a higher highs but the rsi didn't confirm but one thing that we have seen with respect to the nasdaq is that we have formed a uh, we have formed a, ne uh, a bearish pattern what do i mean by that we have a one top being over here and we have another top being over here and on top of that we also have this negative divergence so if one is going to look to sell if one is going to see some sort of a retracement coming it is going to be in the tech sector now let's start putting things together to to form that sector view so we know that looking at the nasdaq which represents the tech sector that the text the nasdaq is highly vulnerable and then this is where we could see a bit of more of a, of a resist uh, more of a weakness coming in comparison to the other indices when we compare the price action to the s p 500 index which represents the overall market yes the momentum is kind of moving to the upside but uh, sorry the price is moving to the upside but the momentum isn't supporting that so uh, so this means that the overall market could see retracement as well so uh, after the tech sector we can look at other markets as well which could be pruned to some sort of a resistance uh, some sort of a sell-off as well so overall what we are really trying to say is that the nasdaq is your first could be your first sector where we could see potentially more retracement coming in very soon and after that it is your overall market which is also likely to see more sort of a retracement uh, uh, once this earning season is over now as we discussed earlier what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the prices of uh, various different stocks. So what we will do is we will begin by looking at the banking stocks first of all. So I'm going to bring out the uh, Goldman Sachs uh, chart. So on the Goldman Sachs chart, we can see that, that recently there has been a retracement. First of all, the price, whenever the price moved quite away from its 50-day simple moving average, after that, what we see as always is a retracement. And that means that this reach when the price was over here, the price retraced back to us is 50-day simple moving average. It came into this area of support which we represented, which we showed in our previous analysis because these levels are not being changed. And then after that, the price started to move to the upside once again. And of course, when the price kind of moved away from its 50 day simple moving average quite a lot, after that, we saw a retracement back towards the 50 day simple moving average. And now 
once again what we are experiencing is very similar scenario where the price is moving away from its 50-day simple moving average quite a lot and that means that we need to define our resistance so in terms of our resistance we are still focused on the all-time highs so that 351 to 356 and the price is very very likely to reach at that level very soon so the moment goldman sachs comes into this area of resistance we could potentially see more prices moving to the downside now in, in relation to support zone, we now can potentially move our support zone slightly bit more higher where the 50 day simple moving average is trading. And that means that if there is a retracement in terms of a price action, then we should potentially be looking to go long uh, or, or the pivot point could be near the 329 to 334 where we could see potentially buy orders. And after that, we could potentially see the next support zone at 316 to 320. Now, folks, if you are worried that I am going a little bit too fast, don't worry about that because a recording of this video will be uploaded on our YouTube channel and then you can definitely go and have a look at that. Let me now quickly go through some of the questions in the meantime because there are Okay, so someone is asking more or about sort of a new. Okay. <clears throat> so, yes, so the really good question has uh, been posted, which is that does Fed meeting, which is taking place today at 7 p.m. British Standard Time, uh, going to have any impact on NASDAQ or on the overall market? Certainly. S&P 500 index, the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones, all are likely to see big influence of the, uh, of the FOMC statement. Of course, the expectation is no change, that we are expecting no difference in, 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 in the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. However, the Federal Reserve's view of the economy can certainly have a big surprise for the market. Okay, I hope that answers your question. So when another question is, when do you buy? Is it based in the candles or the way that the chart is going up? So the buying or the selling is very much based on the support and resistance zones where those pivotal points are. And secondly, based on where the price is trading in relation to the SL to the 50 day or 100 day simple moving average. So for instance, over here, when the price comes close to its 50 day simple moving average, it is also in line